Okay, so today, today, this microphone is down way too low. Again, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Anyways, um, today we are looking at a new phone, another phone, another phone from our friends at Poco. So this is the Poco M4 5G. Now we've done the M4, but this is the 5G version. So there, there may be some differences. I, I don't know. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at their website. We're going to crack open the box to see what it comes with. Uh, I'm going to set it up. You don't need to watch me do that. Uh, we're going to get some actual uh, benchmark results. And uh, for, for fun's sake, we'll, we'll go out and, and try the camera. Yeah. Okay, so... When you head on over to Poco's website, you get entered right here, right off the top, Poco M4 5G. So we can do a little learn more. I think we can do a learn more. Possibly, there it is. And there we go, Poco M4 5G. So can't can't stop the fun. Nope. So MediaTek D Dimensity 700 with 5G, 90 hertz dynamic switch display which i like i like the fact when they have the dynamic a lot of people like to be able to preset it i like it so that it switches because i'm just going to forget and i'm going to kill the battery uh big battery though 5000 milliamp battery which is excellent uh, a little bit of info here mediatek dimensity 700 uh, it's a seven nanometer cool uh this does have 18 watt fast charging which is great um uh, you can if you go up to their higher end phones you can get like substantially faster charging if that's something that's important to you um, this though comes with 5g would that be important to me uh, no because I can't even test it because uh, I don't have a 5g cell service where I live uh, it may be available but I don't use my cell phone wireless that much that uh, it's worth worth paying that extra for but for those that need it cool right uh, up to 2.2 gigahertz for CPU. Again, there's that seven nanometer. Uh, uses uh, LPDDR4X plus UFS 2.2, which they say will give you 139% uh, faster than just UFS 2.1. It does have memory extension technology. So that's also really cool. 6.58 full HD plus display. And there's your 90 hertz dynamic switching for uh, video gaming and browsing, depending on what you're doing. And there's some uh, battery life, uh, 32 hours of calling, 189 hours of music, 22 hours of video playback, 16 hours of navigation. Um, you should be good. And this is, a again, compared to some of the higher end Poco phones, some of the higher end Poco phones, you know, you're getting 30, 40, 50 megapixels. This is sticking with the like the, the good old standards, 13 megapixel AI dual cameras, and that's 13 megapixels for the main camera. Um, stunning aesthetics and uh, more more coolness. Oh, it does have a it says headphone jack. Yep, expandable storage. Cool. It is using MIUI, and uh, it oh this one has NFC. I don't think that, I don't know if the previous one had NFC. One of the things that seems to be missing a lot on the Poco phones, and I'm not 100% sure why, is uh, wireless charging. I, it's not something that they put on there, but maybe they just don't think that it's that big a deal. Anyway, here's the box, Poco M4, and you can see Poco M4 5G, the traditional traditional yellow. That's that's what it is, right? And open. Yep. And just like all their stuff, their phones, you do get a little box. This is going to have like your manuals in it, your SIM card remover, um, but it's all set up. There's your SIM card remover right there. Uh, your manuals. It does come with a little case, which is awesome because unlike, let's say if you buy like a Samsung phone or uh, an iPhone, for instance, you know, you can get third party cases like crazy. But when you buy a phone like this, a little harder, even if it is possible at all to get third party. So it's nice that they include one. There's there's the phone. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, and there's, again, because this is sent to us, we get a European charger. So that's going to be the 18 watt. And you get a nice long cable. Uh, USB-A, I believe it is. Yeah, USB-A to USB-C. So um, just realize if you're buying a Poco phone, try to get one maybe that says international. Uh, for me, I don't care because I have more chargers than I know what to do with. So we'll throw that over there. 
Uh, and there's 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 the phone. So we'll just unwrap this. I do believe they come in a bunch of colors. Yeah, you guys can see there. Uh, there's some colors right there. It's a black, blue, like a baby blue. That Poco yellow is always there. So if you like the Poco yellow, very first phone I ever reviewed from Poco, Poco yellow. So, and there it is, right? There it is. There's the two cameras on the back. Uh, I'm not 100%, they call them AI cameras, but I'm not really sure if it's uh, like one's a wide and one's like a just a little bit of a ultra wide or if one's a wide and one's a telephoto. We'll, we'll look at that when we set it up. And of course, there's the, there's the main camera there. Uh, there's your SIM card slot on that side. St standard buttons, everything's got a nice... Nice click to it, which is nice. And of course, on the bottom, you do have your USB-C. Uh, these are your mics and your speakers. Uh, and that looks like it. It does look like it's only speakers on one side. So I don't see like stereo speakers or anything like that. Uh, kind of a piano-y black up here, glossy. Just realize that's going to get, as you can probably see it already, a little fingerprinty. This area down here, though, pretty good. Uh, bezels. Not well. It don't look too bad when the screen's not on. Let's uh, let's crank crank crack it open. Crank it open. Let's turn it on. There's your Poco right there. And uh, curious to see what the uh, the edging is like. It is like a teardrop. Is that what it's called? Teardrop kind of. They don't have a big s slot at the top, which I like. Um, and I I'll, I'll put this, the the pricing down below because I don't know. Uh, M4 is kind of like, as far as I know, it's kind of like a mid-tier for Poco line. So I'm going to go through here and set this all up. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about um, the actual benchmarks. And we'll take a look at how it performed, taking some pictures, front and rear cameras, as well as some video. Yeah. All right. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've had a chance to play now with this Poco M4 uh, 5G uh, for a couple days. Um, and we'll, we'll do a couple things. We'll actually talk about, uh, we'll show you some of the benchmarks that we took. So first off, uh, we'll just put the benchmark scores up here on the screen while I'm talking about it. Uh, first off, we have Geekbench and we did the CPU um, and you can see here and the the compute scores um, and this is this is what they would consider a mid-range chipset So if you are looking at these scores and being like, oh, well, they're not flagship performance. Well, you're right 100% even the multi uh, multi CPU or multi processor score um, is kind of coming up where some flagship phones are getting for single core so just kind of be aware of that this is a budget phone, right? It's a budget phone kind of designed for uh, those that are looking for something that uh, doesn't break the bank and will give them uh, adequate performance to kind of do the things that they need it to do. Um, we follow this up with uh, 3D Mark. Uh, 3D Mark does show that this gets, again, if, for those that are doing gaming, I probably wouldn't necessarily recommend this phone if you are looking at doing uh, flagship games or like triple A games, things like that. But, you know, we took this phone out and played uh, like the asphalt racing game. We played some PUBG on it. Uh, and both of those played actually really good. And you could see, because of course this has that uh, adaptive refresh rate, where it can change its refresh rate, I believe from 30 all the way up to 90, depending on what it's doing. Um, you definitely could see that 90 hertz kick in, especially if you, and you want to make sure you change that in your display settings because it's defaulted to 60. So if you want it to do that adaptive, you have to go in and change that, which we did. Um, and you can definitely see that extra bit of fluidity that you get from the 90 hertz. Um, so playing games, as long as you're not looking for a phone that's going to play uh, the best and highest out of all the games that are out now and, and probably coming, um, then this phone should do you okay. Again, these are two games that not hugely graphic intensive, but graphic intensive enough that we've seen some budget phones have issue with them. So these ones actually did really well. Um, the last test we did uh, was... Um, 
based on doing like work related benchmarking. And this one here goes through and looks at like how it scrolls and how it deals with uh, moving through text documents and through websites and basically doing some uh, basic like video editing and basic uh, photo editing and things like that. And again, you'll be able to see the final score here. So you can take that and put it up against maybe the phone that you're currently using or some of the other phones that you may see out there that also have benchmarks so that you can, can kind of figure out where it sits. Uh, of course, on our channel, we try to do these benchmarks on all the phones that we get so that you can put those numbers up against them. Um, but, you know, in day-to-day -day use, as you guys can see here, and again, I have this set, like the, everything is really, really fluid. You know, I have no, no issues with that. Of course, you're not gonna see the fluidity uh, on the screen because I shoot in 24 frames, so you're not gonna see that 90 hertz go by here. But, you know, you go into anything websites, whatever, it loads really fast, it moves really quick. Um, that big battery, we'll crank that brightness up, the big battery inside this should have no issues lasting, you know, uh, I would say at least a full day for most of us that are gonna get a phone like this or multiple days. Again, there's that load time and it moves through stuff actually really well and no, no complaints here. Again, I've used this uh, for the last about two days. Um, also the, the big thing when you're looking at a camera or, or a phone like this is of course the camera. So we took this camera out and again, it's 13 megapixels. Um, and again, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the two, the two lenses are here. I believe it's their standard and maybe, maybe their telephoto, uh, is what I thought, but I, I'm not too sure. It could also be a little bit of just a secondary camera for getting things like the portrait modes. If you guys know what that second camera is for, please l let me know down below because it has two, but inside the actual photo app, there's nowhere to change between like a wide and a telephoto or a telephoto and an ultra wide or anything like that. Um, so in regards to photos, uh, we did see, uh, and we'll put some photos up here while I'm talking, um, when you use just a standard photo app and go through it, uh, the photos in general are actually quite good. Uh, the only thing that we did find in some photos when you were uh, trying to get photos in a more of a shaded area and there was a bright area behind it, you can tell that there wasn't a lot of dynamic range. You'll see a lot of sky blowout and things like that where you see that mix. Um, but it does have this kind of cool AI mode. Uh, and in that AI mode, it tries to figure out the settings based on what it thinks it's shooting. And again, I'll put some photos up here that were shot in AI mode. And I did find that those photos actually turned out even better. Uh, the, the camera and the phone actually was able to try to figure out what we were shooting and set up the settings best for what it thought the outcome should be, I guess. Um, so I think the AI mode for me would be what I would use this camera for or all the time. I would just put it in AI mode and let it kind of figure it out. Again, if you're looking for a high-end camera, um, you're probably gonna spend more money, right? Um, 13 megapixels, you know, it's fine. If you look at the iPhone, the iPhone has been shooting 12 megapixels forever. So uh, that, that's really good. Um, Front-facing camera, I think it's I think it's lower, but again, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it does fine, the front-facing camera, I took a few shots of myself. Um, detail was good, color representation was good, uh, it, it, it does the job. And, and if you are shooting in their portrait mode, you get actually a really nice depth and the cutout actually isn't, isn't bad at all. Um, you do, and this was using the front facing camera, now in the rear facing camera, you'll get even better with that portrait mode because you have just better cameras in general. Um, now, switching to uh, video mode, this does not shoot 4K. Realize that does not shoot 4K. This is a 1080p front and rear. You do have the ability to go to 720 if you want, but really, let's be honest, who's going to shoot 720 when you have 1080? Um, so the 1080, uh, again, color was decent. Um, the video quality for the most part was really good. I don't think it has any kind of built in stabilizer, so you want to make sure that your uh, hand holding this. Uh, really steady or putting it on some kind of tripod mount if you are doing a fair bit of walking or panning or anything like that. But if you're just trying to get lock shots or you you know you are fairly steady, image quality is good. You know, for a 1080p, 
Again, you're seeing some of the, the 1080 footage up right now. Okay, so we're just testing <clears throat> the front facing camera for video. Uh, seeing if there's any stabilization. I don't know if there is. Uh, doesn't look, well, sort of stable. That could just be me. Uh, as well as the quality of the camera. And of course, the quality of the microphone. So you can you can see my backyard, and uh, we we'll just do a little little walk. Nothing overly exciting. And then I'm going to be in the shade here. So if I turn, you'll be able to see. Yeah, see all the it gets a it gets a fair bit of blow out there where it really can't deal overly well with me being in the shade and this right being over overexposed. So. Like, I'm sure if I tapped on that part, yeah, see, oh, I tap and then it says nope. See, that's what it should be closer to looking like, somewhere in that area there. But, at least you could adjust it if you needed to, I guess. Right, and as soon as I move, it gets out of that. And if I tap on my face, of course, it exposes for me. Yeah, which is really... You know, as much as we all talk about we want everything exposed properly, you know, even even in a lot of big movies, if you watch, the background is not exposed overly well. It just can't deal with it. But is this is this good enough? It does have the ability to go to a six time zoom. Again, I believe that six time zoom, you guys can see it here. The six time zoom, as far as I can tell, it is completely electronic. There is no optical in there. Um, but you know what if you need it you can get something which is cool last but not least really is who is this for uh, simply put it's it's going to be someone that wants a phone for uh, to do everything but doesn't necessarily need it to do anything really well right so if you're looking for a phone that does high-end gaming no I wouldn't I wouldn't get this if you're looking for someone who wants the, the best of camera, no, I, I wouldn't get this. If you're looking for something that's got the fastest processor in it, right? No, I wouldn't get it. But if you're someone that doesn't want to spend a lot of money uh, and get a phone that gives you 5G, which is good, gives you a mid-tier chip, so your gaming, for most of us, would be fine. Um, your ability to do some photography, so you put it up on your Facebook, you put it up on your Instagram, you do all that kind of stuff, has the ability to do some photo editing, um, and just day-to-day -day general usage is, is good, right? Especially for the price point. Yes, you can spend more money and get a higher-end Poco phone, for sure, a bit more money, then go that route. Or you can spend way more money, way more money, and get a flagship phone from some of these other companies out there. But you know what? I think for a lot of people, uh, this phone is going to do it for you. It's going to be fine. Um, that's it. That's it for today. The Poco M4 5G, one of Poco's newest phones that they have out on the market. And uh, we want to thank Poco for sending it to us. And uh, we look forward to seeing more of their gear as it comes out. What do you guys think? Is this a phone that you would you would consider? Have you used the Poco phones before? And what phone are you currently using? All right, guys, leave comments down below, and we will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and we'll see you guys, uh, well, tomorrow. Later, my friends.